What is going on, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and today I'm here with my top five picks for this coming week's new comic book day. Five, you say? Yes, just five. It's a small week. I didn't quite have ten, and we're just going to go with five. It's a it's a nicer, rounder number. So if you want to see what's on this list and share what's on yours, be sure to stick around, hit that thumbs up, and let's go. Huge shout out to the homies over at Big Time Collectibles. Check out their website. Follow them on social media. It's con season. That means they're dropping fire all the time. And my boy Justin's Comics has got you covered. If you need anything cleaned or pressed, you can find the link directly to him in the description of all of my videos. Be sure to check out ABX Comics and Games while you're checking that description. That's my local comic shop. They have a fantastic Facebook group. Don't miss out on that. So let's get into it. This is my top five. There's some cool stuff to talk about. I'm not going to lie. Only five books, but definitely five bangers with one caveat, but kicking it off first is Batman issue number 149, Chip Zdarsky's epilogue to his whole failsafe saga. Now, I was wondering about it with the last issue, knowing failsafe is a part of absolute power, DC Comics' big summer event, the first summer blockbuster in years. What are we doing killing off failsafe, or seemingly killing off failsafe? He is just a robot with the Zurana Batman personality, the truest, unrestricted form of Batman, and they shut him down destroyed big fight all this stuff and in this issue we're supposed to be getting some kind of epilogue before we dive into absolute power this title has to start feeding the event we're getting close to it so what do we can we expect from this uh amanda waller finding the failsafe robot she's more than aware of it she's been monitoring it had an interaction with it we know it's a major player on the trinity of evil her tight-knit team that's going to be heading this attack on all the metas so i'm excited Really excited to see what she's going to do to reactivate failsafe, to take some of the safeguard down that is in there, like the no killing thing. I wonder if she's going to shut that down completely. This has been like an unstoppable android, much like an Amazo robot, which is perfect because it'll be leading an Amazo army in absolute power. I love the Amazo robot first appeared back in the Silver Age and Justice League. It's really cool. So I'm excited for this. I can't wait to see if Failsafe gets an opportunity to go up against Brainiac. There's so much potential for new story stuff with Failsafe. It's it's really cool. I mean, it is just like a, a riff on Amazo, but they're attaching it to Amazo. So that kind of makes it dope. We've got Dr. Tio Morrow in there and everything. So all this stuff is in place to make Failsafe his own villain, his own character. Knock the bad ears off. Let's go. Next up on the list is none other than Philip Kennedy Johnson's Green Lantern War Journal, issue number 10. So Green Lantern is firing on all cylinders. Not just this one, as a whole. They have completely rebuilt the Green Lantern universe uh, with this Jeremy Adams run. And John Stewart's kind of been playing in his own playground. He's facing an ancient evil, one of the old gods. It actually ties back to Philip Kennedy Johnson's Superman War World Saga. Phenomenal series. Read that if you haven't. Get the collections. But it's great how he's calling back to his own work. And it's also great diving into deep lore of DC Comics with the old gods that predate Darkseid and Highfather and all them. So he's stuck in this hellscape with an old guard or an old god. But Shepard, Green Lantern Shepard, went a couple issues ago to look for Guy Gardner to get help to find him. In this issue, we can expect for them to make a suicide mission to go rescue John Stewart, which is awesome because both of those lanterns are kind of not present in the main Green Lantern proper story. We need to get John over there. I've been saying that. I don't need him to this book to end, but we need John interacting and dealing with the United Planet situation as well. They have taken over the Green Lantern Corps. They have destroyed power batteries. And that's really the big Green Lantern story that's being told right now. And John's just kind of stuck, tucked away trying to fight for his life in this little hellscape. So can Guy Gardner and Lantern Shepard get him out? We'll see. I hope they don't kill off Lantern Shepard. I really like that new guy. Next up on the list, a brand new title coming out of the Energon universe, the connected universe between the brand new Transformer series and the G.I. Joe stuff. Now, Destro, the leader of Mars industry, pretty much a weapons expert, has now teamed up with Cobra Commander at the final issue of that last miniseries. I like how they're formatting these. Instead of doing an ongoing series, we had a five-issue Duke miniseries and a five-issue Cobra Commander miniseries. After those wrapped up, they started Scarlet's miniseries and now Destro's. So it'll pick right up where we left off with Cobra Commander, bringing his tech, his knowledge, and everything from Cobra Law and his experience with Megatron to Mars Industries to make a formidable army. And neither one of these guys are going to trust each other. It's going to be violent. There's going to be deception conniving this people stabbing each other in the back and it's going to be awesome i'm ready to see them form their um, form their posse 
and see what happens when they go after the Joes. And I'm really excited to see when the Transformers are potentially going to start weaving into this. Because right now, it's just the tech. It's the Energon that they're using to uh, power all these weapons. The Joes are falling behind, though. We'll see if they can catch up. Next up, this is on the list. I'm not necessarily too excited about it. I know, I know, everyone's raving about Ultimate Spider-Man right now. It's not bad, but I think it's just not good either. Spider-Man has been one of those titles that has suffered for years from underwhelming stories and creatives on it. And when Ultimate Spider-Man was coming out, everyone was so excited, everyone was so hopeful, and they got it, and it didn't absolutely suck. So everyone was like, this is amazing. It's not. It's just decent. Nothing's really happened. All they've done is set up a world, and that is it. It's been just as much Ultimate Green Goblin as it has been Ultimate Spider-Man. I was really excited with the first issue. I like that. And now it's really just not, it's, it's really nothing. So in this issue, we're supposed to be seeing Peter Parker go after Kingpin, who's the leader of the Daily Planet, Daily Bugle. I'm a Superman fan. Wilson Fisk is working specifically for the Council of the Makers, and he's going to be faced with this. I read the Ultimates number one, and it's kind of diving into the team going after the Council and trying to activate all these heroes. I'm not sure how much longer we have to go until this starts tying into the bigger Ultimate universe, but we're going to... And last one on the list, number five, one I'm actually legitimately excited for, which I can confidently say is probably the best, definitely one of the best ongoing titles or books as a whole for the year. I expect this one to win some awards this year. And it's none other than Wonder Woman. And this is issue number 10. Tom King and Daniel Sampier are crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. It's not my favorite book on shelves, but the quality is undeniable with this. From the writing to the art to the storytelling, it is just absolutely amazing. And in this issue, Wonder Woman, who's been kidnapped, tortured, beaten, and put through the ringer by the Sovereign, is going to be facing her arch nemesis. The Sovereign is bringing in none other than Cheetah to deal the killing blow. Diana asked her sisters previously to sit this mission out as she was fearing for their safety and really just wanted to confront it on her own. They're not going to listen. They're coming to rescue Diana. Can't wait to see the entire Wonder Team rocking from uh, Wonder Girl to Donna Troy to wonder girl again it's going to be great this has just been a real treat getting to read this one i'm definitely excited for it and uh, there's a couple honorable mentions on my list that didn't make it into the top five like i said i had seven titles but world's finest is dropping this week as well and there's one other one i don't remember off the top of my head but needless to say it's going to be a decent week and it's going to be coming uh coming right at the back end of heroes con and i cannot wait for that if you're watching this before heroes con be sure to swing by our booth be set up for comics carrying cancer at booth number 1769. It's going to be a blast. We've got all kinds of cool stuff from the art book to the exclusive to art prints, as well as a, a bunch of creators coming by to sign and do little demos and stuff at the booth. It's going to be a blast. I appreciate everybody watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that join button down below. We're getting close to the channel member appreciation drawing. Uh, new Mutants 98 is going to a new home, as well as original art from uh, original Deadpool. Uh, Artists from one of the 90s runs, just all kinds of stuff. It's going to be a huge, huge affair. I can't wait to see who's going to win that. So until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.